Hey, what's up guys? My name is Javier and welcome back to Tool Craze. So if you guys have been following the Tool Craze website recently, then you guys should know all about the new DeWalt Flexible system that recently came out. And what's crazy about the new DeWalt Flexible system is that they got these crazy new 20 volt flexible batteries that are also 60 volt batteries, making them dual voltage batteries. So out of the box, they provide 20 volts and they can power all your DeWalt 20 volt power tools. But as soon as you plug them into a 60 volt power tool, they pump out 60 volts. Now, Technically speaking, you're really only getting 18 volts instead of 20 volts and 54 volts instead of 60 volts. But when they're fully charged, you really do get the 20 volts or the 60 volts. And as soon as you start using these batteries, the voltage drops back down to 18 volts or 54 volts with a 60 volt tool. So to go along with the new Flexful 20 volt, 60 volt batteries, DeWall also created all sorts of new 60 volt and even 120 volt Flexful cordless power tools. I'll go ahead and show you a few of them in a moment. And for that, I'll take you over to the Tool Craze website. So we'll start off first with the new Flexvolt 60 volt cordless power tools. And the new Flexvolt lineup includes a new 60 volt grinder. I believe that all the new Flexvolt power tools are brushless, so there's no need to repeat that. Each one of these is brushless, so just keep that in mind. The new 60 volt grinder provides a larger capacity than what's available at 18 volts at the moment. And we see that as this has a large six inch capacity. DeWall even claims that this grinder has 13 amp equivalent power as compared to their D28144. And it also has an electric brake, making it a braking grinder, just like the newly released Milwaukee M18 fuel braking grinder, and also the braking 18 volt grinder that Makita has. Okay, so moving up the page, DeWall also has a 60 volt cordless reciprocating saw. And remember, all the flexible cordless power tools are brushless. This model also claims to offer more power than the 13 amp cord reciprocating saw which is their own DW311. Then onto the next Flexvolt model. And here we have the Flexvolt 60 volt table saw. Now this is what I'm talking about right here. I've been waiting for someone to come out with a cordless table saw for a while now. I know Metabo has been teasing us with a cordless model, but I'm not sure if it's available or not. At least not here in the USA for that matter. But the good news is that DeWall has one out now. It has the same styling as the corded portable table saw models and even looks like the DW7480. Now the main difference between this and their corded portable table saws, besides the fact that this model is cordless, is that the Flexful model runs on an 8.5 inch blade instead of the traditional 10 inch blade found in corded table saw models. This drops the depth of cut down to 2.5 inches instead of the usual 3 and an eighth inches. This may seem like a big deal, but DeWalt claims that this saw has the power of a corded tool. Also keep in mind that if you're using a table saw on the job site, you'll still be able to rip the usual sheet goods with no problem and also dimensional 2x lumber. Of course, you'll need to make two passes to cut 4 by lumber, but if you think of it, you'll still be doing the same thing on a quarter table saw. This saw also has a rack and pinion fend system that I like a lot on my DeWalt quarter table saw. And if you're worried about battery life, this saw is rated to be able to cut up to 302 linear feet per charge and 3 quarter inch OSB, which is a lot of work to get done. And if you do the math, that's 37 pieces of plywood if you cut them long ways at 8 feet apiece. Moving on to the next Flexvolt tool, they have a 60 volt drill, but it's not a regular drill. This model is a stud and joist drill, similar to the Milwaukee Whole Hogs, but of course this model is cordless. You know, it's funny because people often ask me if DeWall makes tools similar to the Milwaukee Whole Hogs, and they actually have a couple of corded models. And now with the Flexvolt system, they also have a cordless model as well. Now, this type of drill isn't meant to replace a typical 18 volt drill, because it's a specialist tool designed for drilling large diameter holes. They're also very heavy, so they're not going to be your everyday do-it-all drill, but if you're a plumber or electrician running holes all day, this is going to be your best friend. This cordless model also has a clutch to protect your wrists and arms from getting strained, and it comes with a two-speed gearbox. It also says you can get up to 138 holes on a single charge, although it doesn't specify what size holes. And the next flexful tool is a new cordless 60 volt circular saw. You know, I've been wondering when DeWalt was going to update their current 20 volt 6.5 inch circular saw with a brushless model using a seven and a quarter inch blade. But as of today, they still don't have a 20 volt brushless circular saw. But it seems that the wall solution to a brushless seven and a quarter inch circular saw is this 60 volt model. So you get a large depth of cut at two and nine sixteenth inches. And it says you get cordless convenience with the power of a corded tool, which is what we all really want is corded power with our battery powered tools. And it's got 5,800 RPMs and has an aluminum shoe, which all sounds great. Runtime sounds very good also with 339 cuts into 2x4 lumber. What I really like so far on this saw is just how lightweight it is at only 7.6 pounds. 
Now, it doesn't say if that's what the battery installed, but that'd be pretty sweet if it was that light with the battery installed. Next on the list are a couple of flexible miter saws that aren't 60 volt tools. They're actually 120 volt tools. And the way they get their 120 volts is because they use two flexible batteries. So it's basically very easy math. Each battery is 60 volts and you have two batteries, so multiply 60 by two and you get 120 volts. This is actually nothing new as Makita has been doing the same thing with their X2 power tools. They're actually 36 volt tools powered by two 18 volt batteries together. So going back to the tool themselves, these 120 volt power tools are a couple of 12 inch miter saws. What's great about this, actually amazing if you think about it, is that up until now, all of the coils miter saws have been using seven and a quarter inch blades with the Metabo using a slightly larger eight and a half inch blade. Also, Milwaukee just came out with their 10 inch cordless miter saw. So it's pretty impressive that DeWall is the first to come out with 12 inch cordless miter saws. It's amazing how far technology has come today and it's only gonna keep getting better. So both models offer a 12 inch blade and one is a fixed 12 inch model, meaning it doesn't slide. And there's also a 12 inch sliding model. Both of these two models appear to be cordless versions of the DW716 and the DWS780 12 inch miter saws. I have the Corda DW716 model and it's never let me down. It's a great saw in all respects, although it doesn't slide. What's also great about these two models is that DeWall has a special adapter you can use on 120 volt flexible tools to make them corded power tools. So there's no need to worry about your batteries running out because if they do, you're still able to work with the corded adapter. As far as runtime on battery goes, we can expect up to 289 cuts per charge with three and a quarter inch trim. I think that was with pine molding if I remember correctly, so you should have plenty of runtime before the batteries quit. So all of these DeWalt 60 volt and 120 volt power tools are the ones that are available right now. Go ahead and check out the Tool Craze website if you want more info, and also include a link to purchase if you decide to jump on the DeWalt Flexful system. I also want to mention that that's not the end of their Flexful line as DeWalt has more Flexful tools as well. I covered more over here on the Tool Craze website, such as another DeWalt 60 volt miter saw. Now, before you guys get too excited about this model, keep in mind that this particular model is only found in Europe. This model was spotted in the UK and will probably never make its way over here to North America. Why do I say that, you ask? Well, it's because this saw is based on a corded model, the DEW777, which has never made its way over here to North America. So I think it's safe to say that we won't get this cordless model. Because this model is a 60 volt, it's not going to have the same 12 inch capacity as 120 volt saws, and it uses a smaller blade. It's listed as using a 216 millimeter blade, which translates to eight and a half inches. There's also a few other flexible power tools I want to show you guys that you can get excited about. Just keep in mind that these new models aren't out yet, but they will be soon. They'll be coming out with five new flexible power tools, all 60 volts, with a new SDS 1 and 9 16 inch rotary hammer, a 60 volt blower, oh and check this out, a new cordless track saw. Then there's also a new chain saw with a 16 inch bar and chain, and a new 60 volt string trimmer. There's also a new higher capacity flexible battery coming out soon, with a nine amp hour capacity. The current flexible batteries are six amp hours, so you get three more amp hours of capacity for even more runtime. So lots of great new tools coming to the new Flexvolt system. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at one of those new DeWalt Flexvolt cordless power tools. And when I first heard the news of a new 120 volt sliding 12 inch miter saw, I knew I had to get one, so I purchased this bad boy myself. I currently have the DeWalt DW716 corded 12 inch miter saw, and that saw kicks butt. And you guys know that I love cordless power tools. So to satisfy my cordless power tool craving, I bought me the DeWalt 20 volt sliding miter saw last year. It's a great little saw and all, but what I really wanted was a cordless full size sliding miter saw that could do everything. So that's why I bought me this model. This particular model is a DHS 790 and DeWall actually has two 12 inch cordless miter saws. One that's a fixed model and one that's a sliding saw model. The model that you see right here is a sliding saw model. So it's a 12 inch sliding dual bevel miter saw running on 120 volts. And because the flexible batteries only run at 60 volt max, this cordless miter saw uses two of them together to double the voltage to get 120 volts which is pretty much the same way that Makita does with their X2 power tools using two 18 volt batteries to double the voltage. And not only that, 
What's also great about this cordless miter saw is that not only is it a cordless miter saw, but you can also make it a corded plug-in miter saw with their 120 volt AC adapter to plug it in. As I was saying earlier, this FlexFo model is pretty much the cordless version of the DWS 780 miter saw from DeWalt. And it's also a 12 inch sliding miter saw with pretty much the same exact stats. It's running the same 15 amp motor, running the same exact 3800 RPMs, the same massive horizontal cut capacity so you can be able to cut up to 2x14 lumber, or even better yet, up to 2x16 lumber with the back fence. I'll show you guys later in this video how to cut larger pieces of lumber with the back fence. It also has the same exact vertical cutting capacity of 6 and 3 quarter inches, and can also cut 7 and a half inch crown molding nested against the fence. You also get three options to purchase a saw. You can buy it as a bare tool without batteries or the charger. But what's neat about that model is that even though it doesn't come with batteries or a charger, it comes with the 120 volt AC adapter, so you can use this side of the box as a corded tool. And then if you ever get two flexible batteries in the future, you'll be set to use this as a cordless saw. The bare tool kit DHS 790AB is priced at $649. The next kit is a miter saw along with two batteries because you need a minimum of two batteries to use them together to run the saw. It won't run on only one battery. So the next kit comes with two batteries and the two battery charger, which charges two flexible batteries at the same time. This kit is a DHS 790T2 and it's priced at $749. And the next kit, the DHS 790AT2, comes with everything including the saw, two flexible batteries, the two battery charger, and the 120 volt AC adapter. And that's the kit that I bought, which retails for $799. Here's a DHS 790AT2 kit box in my garage, standing next to my DeWalt table saw. Let's open it up to see what we can expect out of the box. First, let's make an incision on the top of the box. And take a look at that. The blade was trying to make an escape out of the box. Shame on you. Or what is this, a blade? Or is it a DeWalt branded frozen pizza? Doesn't that look like a frozen pizza to you guys? Anyways... Let me put it aside and see what else we got. So right here in the bottom corner we have the two DeWalt flexible batteries. And the next accessory up here is the 120 volt AC adapter to make this a corded saw. The next accessory on top is a dual battery charger. Remember that this charges two batteries at a time. And that's pretty much it for the accessories on the top of the box so let's remove the top piece of styrofoam to see what's underneath. And with that out of the way we can see the miter saw in all its glory. Before I take out the saw I found a plastic bag with the manual. But wait, there's more as a dust bag is stuffed inside the bag. And also inside the bag next to the manual is a wrench for the miter saw adjustments. I also found a material clamp hiding beside the saw trying to be sneaky. That seems to be all the accessories and the only thing left is to take the saw out of the box. So I took it out of the box and I placed it on my table for further inspection. And after taking it out, I noticed that the whole thing comes out as one piece, meaning there's nothing to put together. The last miter saw I reviewed, the Evolution Rage 3, came out in three large pieces. And it took me about 30 minutes to read the manual and to put it all together. So it's good to see that this saw is ready to go out of the box. So one of the first things that I noticed was how smooth the base moves side to side to make miter cuts. It just glides side to side. I noticed that there's a plastic bushing between the base and the rotating head to choose angles. It's probably a nylon bushing and it appears to be what makes a saw glide smoothly side to side. Very nice. I also noticed that a blade is already installed. This is also great because I don't have to waste time installing a blade as it's already installed. That, and it means I have two new blades. The one that's installed, plus the DeWalt 12 inch frozen pizza. So as I was checking out my new saw, I noticed that the blade was rubbing on something as it would slide forward and back. Notice how the blade turns a little bit as I move the saw head forward and back. And it does it near the same spot, meaning that the blade is making contact with something inside the slot. But this is weird because it's not supposed to. I noticed there was some sort of tab in there. It was a bit hard to see with the small opening, so I went ahead and removed the two throw plate pieces to see what was underneath. And this here is a close up of that tab that I'm talking about. There apparently seems to be no reason for this to be here. And unlike the base, this section is made out of plastic. The only thing I can think of for this being here is, since it's made of plastic, would be so that if a customer tried to return this, the seller or DeWalt can determine if this saw has been used before. There are people out there that like to quote unquote borrow tools for free and then return them to the store. Even if they claim that they didn't use a saw, this little plastic tab will let the seller know if it's really been used or not. So anyways, while I was here, I went ahead and ran the saw blade through it so it wouldn't bother me later. 
I figured this would get damaged sooner or later, so I might as well do it now. And then I put the throw plates back on. The next thing I wanted to check was to see how good the blade alignment was out of the box. The wall miter saws are known for being set up well at the factory, so they're ready to use out of the box. But as always, you want to double check to see if this is true with your DeWalt miter saw. So using a square, I checked to see if the blade was square to the fence. And the saw blade makes full contact with the square, meaning that it's square with the fence. And checking the blade to see if it's square vertically, I'm getting the same exact thing with this saw, so it's also square vertically. And this lets you know it's properly calibrated for bevel and for miter cuts out of the box. I also wanted to show you the base of the saw. We all know that miter saws can make miter angles all the way up to 45 or 50 degrees to either the left or the right of the saw. But what really caught my attention for this model was that this model can go all the way up to 60 degrees to the right side of the saw to make 60 degree angle cuts. Now, there was a time when I did flooring part time and I never needed to cut anything beyond maybe 50 degrees on my saw. So at first I sort of thought this was overkill. But I did some research and one of the most common uses for 60 degree angles is for making legs for picnic tables to get them at the right angle. Now, I know I won't be making any picnic table legs anytime soon, but it is nice to know that I can with this saw if I ever needed to. And another thing that I do appreciate about the additional 60 degree angle is that I like to turn my miter saws all the way to the right when I store them. And this is because miter saws stick out in the front, especially a huge sliding miter saw such as this one. So I like to move the saw to the right or to the left, but most of the time I go to the right. And this is to keep the saw as compact as possible for storage. And because this saw can go even further past 45 or 50 degrees, all the way up to 60 degrees, it gives this saw an even more compact footprint for when I need to store it. It also makes the saw easier to fit the doorways with the rails in the back being out of the way. So before I test out the saw, I wanted to show you guys the dual battery charger that comes with the saw. This is a completely brand new DeWalt charger that charges new flexible batteries and also the existing 20 volt batteries. It doesn't look anything like the DCB-101 and it looks more like the DCB-115 charger, the one that's coming out with the new DeWalt 20 volt kits, but a stretched out limo version of the DCB-115. I also wanted to give you guys a close look at the new flexible batteries. These are the current 6 amp hour models, which sounds like a lot, but what most people don't tell you is that these are only 6 amp hour batteries when you plug them into 20 volt tools and they're running at 20 volts. When you plug them into 60 volt tools, they're actually only 2 amp hours when running at 60 volts. So in the case of this 120 volt miter saw, the two batteries are running together in parallel to double the volts to create 120 volts, but the amp hour stays the same at only 2 amp hours. So this saw is running two flexible batteries at 120 volts, and the batteries are providing only 2 amp hours of runtime capacity. Anyways, the new batteries have 2 out of 3 bars of power left, so I placed them on the charger to get them ready to test out. So after the batteries were done charging, I went ahead and took this out of my backyard so I could test it out. Since this is a large 12 inch sliding miter saw, I thought what better way to test it out than to make a cut into a piece of 2 by 12 lumber. And it's a pressure treated piece of lumber. So here's the first cut and it starts to cut nicely. And the blade goes right through the pressure treated 2x12 like a hot knife through butter. You know, if I didn't know any better, I would have thought this was a corded saw. And here's a close up of the cut lumber so you guys can see just how clean the cut came out with the included 60 tooth blade. And remember that as is, this saw can cut 2x14 pieces of lumber, but it can also cut larger pieces of lumber with the back fence. So to get to the back fence, you have to first remove both fences to make way for the back fence. Then with the two fences out of the way, you'll need to place a support piece to hold up the large piece of lumber. Any large piece of 2x lumber will do, and for this demo, I'll be using the same piece of 2x12 I just cut. Then you place a larger piece of lumber on top of that and rest it on the back fence. Oh, and these little sections left over from the fences are the back fence, and are just tall enough to rest a large piece that's going to be cut. Since I don't have a 2x16 piece of lumber, I'll be using a 2x12 and adding a 2x4 piece in front of it to imitate a large piece of wood. So just use your imagination and pretend it's a 2x16 piece of lumber, even if a 2x12 and a 2x4 don't actually add up to the length of a 2x16, but I think you guys get the point. So anyways, here's the cut, and once again, smooth as butter. And look at that, our dog is taking a dump in the background. <laughs> Ain't that just nice? Next on the list, I wanted to see how I would do on a 4x6 piece of lumber. My cordless 20 volt DeWalt miter saw can cut these, but in two cuts, with the lumber being flipped over for the second cut. Also notice how I set up the saw so that it doesn't slide. 
so it can make the cut in the chop saw fashion. And it accomplished each cut in one single pass, making this a great saw for cutting not only 4x4 lumber, but also 4x6 lumber. You can also cut wider 4x lumber with the sliding action as well. One of the cool things about this saw and many DeWalt miter saws is their XPS LED light system. I think they stopped calling it the XPS LED light system on this model, but regardless of what it's called, it's still there. And the way it works is it uses LEDs near the blade that light up and cast a perfect shadow onto the surface of the material to show you your cut line. The great thing about the LED light shadow system is that you never need to calibrate it, ever. And it always stays true, even if you change out the blades with thicker or thinner blades. Also keep in mind that the cut line shadow system becomes clear and easier to see the closer the blade is to the material. And to activate the LED light system, there's a button on the handle above the grip that activates the light. And the light stays on for about 20 seconds so you can line up the blade with the cut line. Alternately, the LED light also turns on when you press the trigger and start the motor. And here you can see the shadow shows exactly where the blade is going to cut. The only thing about it is that it's hard to see if you're outside and it's very bright. And on this day it was a bit cloudy, but it was a little bit visible. It's easier to see if you're indoors. Because it is a miter saw, you're probably going to be doing most of your cuts onto base or crown molding. What's sweet about this saw is that it has some of the largest fences out there. We're talking about the ability to cut up to 6 and 3 quarter inch molding. And just to show off these tall fences, I thought I'd show you a cut or two with a tall piece of trim. I don't remember how tall it is, but it's on the larger side. And it's really just to give you an idea of what this saw is capable of. And it can easily cut taller trim than this piece. You can also cut large pieces of crown molding. I have these crown molding stop accessories that are reviewed when I bought my DW716 miter saw. And luckily they fit this saw. What's great about these accessories is that they help keep crown molding leaning on the fence at a 45 degree angle, just as it would on your ceilings, and helps you get a more precise cut when cutting the corner angles and compound angles. And here's a couple of cuts just so you can see how it works. But really I'm trying to show you how useful these tall fences really are, as I can tell you that you wouldn't be able to cut crown molding this big on the 20 volt DeWalt miter saw unless it's lying flat. I know the molding is the same exact molding from the last cut, but just use your imagination and pretend it's a piece of crown molding. And here we can see we have a nice compound miter cut and crown molding, perfect for an inside corner. The next performance test I wanted to do was to see how long these flexible batteries would last. What good is having a cordless battery powered saw with quarter performance if the batteries don't last? So to put it to the test, I first charged up the batteries so they were fully charged, so keep that in mind. Usually when I test out saws for runtime, I've tested them to see how many cuts they can make into 2x4 lumber. But seeing as you can cut 2x4 lumber with smaller miter saws, I figured that someone looking into buying this particular miter saw was probably going to be cutting lots of large wide dimensional lumber. Otherwise they'd be going with a smaller miter saw or a model that didn't slide. So a good test for runtime would be to see how many cuts it can make into 2x10 lumber. And that's exactly what I did. I would make a set of 20 cuts and then let the saw rest for 6 minutes and then make another set of cuts until the batteries would run out. Earlier I showed you the batteries had a built in fuel gauge to show you the remaining battery charge. But I noticed that as I was making cut after cut after cut, that as the batteries were running low, the saw started to blink to indicate that the batteries are low. I thought this was a nice feature to have so you don't have to go behind the saw to reach the batteries to see if they're running low or not. I probably got another 40 or so cuts after the low battery flashing started. So it's a nice warning that you're running low on battery, but it's not a life or death emergency to have to rush the batteries to the charger right away as you still have a good way to go when you see the low battery status. So eventually the batteries did give out, as you can see the saw gave out right at the end and didn't even finish the last cut. So you guys ready for the results? Okay so after putting up a good fight, this saw was able to get 151 and a half cuts. That's actually pretty good and I'd say this can easily be an entire day's worth of cuts if someone was framing a house, framing a roof, building a deck or whatnot. And I know I've tested out saws before that have gotten way more than 151 cuts. But those saws were tested on 2x4s. Let me remind you that this saw made 151 cuts into 2x10 lumber, which is nearly the width of three 2x4s laid side by side. So if I was cutting 2x4s with this saw, I could have easily gotten nearly triple the amount of cuts. I also wanted to mention that I used the included 60 tooth blade that was already installed in the saw, and not the DeWalt 12 inch personal pizza, which is also a 60 tooth blade. Now, the reason I bring this up is because the extra blade is a flex fold blade, and what makes it different is that it's designed for use with cordless tools in mind to offer better runtime on this battery powered saw because of a thinner kerf and so forth. 
Now, the reason I didn't use this blade to test for runtime is because I wanted to get a real world idea of runtime with a normal blade. A blade that you'd probably be using if you bought one off the shelf at your local store. The DeWalt blade that was included is a regular 12 inch blade for corded saws and that's what I figured most people would be using on their saw, regardless of if it was cordless or not. I also feel that not everyone's going to be inclined to buy the new DeWalt Flexfold blades because they might want to go with Diablo blades or simply buy some other brand to save some cash. You guys remember that 120 volt AC adapter I showed you when I unboxed a saw? Let me show you guys how to install it on the back of the saw. So first you remove this black plug near the battery compartment between the two battery slots and then you slide the AC adapter into place. It only goes in one way so it's impossible to place it the wrong way. Then you plug the power cord into an outlet or extension cord and voila! You just turn the DHS790 cordless miter saw into the DWS780 corded saw. And to test it out, let's make a few cuts in the 2x8. So the first thing I noticed was the sound. It sure does sound like a corded miter saw. It actually sounds a lot like my DW716 miter saw. The motor is definitely louder with the adapter and it gives you the impression that it's a bit more torquier. I was also curious to see if you get the same performance if you're running on battery power versus running this saw while it's plugged in. So I ran them both and I put the video clips side by side as they both cut 2x10 lumber. And out of those three cuts, they seem to have nearly identical cutting speed. So in this round, the performance is pretty similar, whether this saw is battery powered or if it's plugged in. Next, I wanted to see how this saw compared to my good old corded DW716 model to compare performance between this saw with a battery and while plugged in to see how it fares next to a corded 15 amp 12 inch miter saw. And because the DW716 doesn't slide, I used a 2x8 on all the cuts to make it even steven. So after all the cuts were done, they were all pretty close in terms of cutting speed. But if you look closely, the DHS790 with the AC adapter outperformed the DW716 and itself with batteries. Not by much, but if you look closely, you can notice it comes in first each time. There was a time where the DHS790 with batteries tied the DW716, but on all the other cuts, the DW716 beat out the DHS790 with batteries by a slight margin. All the cuts were basically plunge cuts where the blade plunges into the middle of the board and it cuts its way through from the middle. So this requires more torque and it confirms my suspicions that the DHS790 has a bit more torque when powered by the AC adapter. But according to all these tests, you won't notice a difference in regular everyday use. And not only that, the performance is identical when cutting 2x lumber such as these side by side cuts into a 2x10. So I'd say the performance is definitely as good as or better than the corded saws and you get nearly the same performance when using this saw with the batteries or when it's plugged in. It does offer slightly more torque when you plug in the saw, but you won't notice the extra power unless you're doing plunge cuts. But even then the difference will be hard to tell unless you put the two side by side such as I did. So to summarize this entire video very quickly, this cordless miter saw definitely does not disappoint. It's got all the power you'd expect from a corded 15 amp 12 inch miter saw, so there's no compromise in power just because you're running off of batteries. And the performance is nearly identical, whether you're running this off of batteries or when it's plugged in. It's not until you start doing plunge cuts that you'll notice a tad bit more power when it's plugged in, although the difference is hardly noticeable. And I also love the LED light system that casts a nice shadow over the cut line, making it very easy to line up your next cut. Although the shadow is very hard to see when you're outdoors and the sun is bright. It's also a huge miter saw, that's for sure as it's basically the DWS780 miter saw, but running off of batteries. And you also get to enjoy all the benefits of a massive miter saw, such as the ability to cut up to 2x14 lumber as is, or up to 2x16 lumber with a back fence. You also get that massive cutting height of 6 and 3 quarter inches for baseboards and 7 and a half inches for crown molding. It's also a dual bevel miter saw, meaning that you can tilt the saw to either side for making bevel cuts without needing to flip the boards around. And as far as negatives go, well for the most part there weren't any as the accuracy on this saw is spot on out of the box. Oh wait, actually there is a negative, and that's that this saw doesn't come with any side extensions, which is typical to Walt fashion. But at least they do include a material clamp. I also wasn't too crazy about that plastic tab that was underneath the throw plate. But honestly I wouldn't have noticed it if it wasn't for my OCD, and it would have been cut with the first cut that I made without me noticing it. 
It is a bit expensive for miter saws. It can run you up to $800 plus tax if you order the kit with all the included accessories. But if you do the math, it's roughly around the same price as the corded DWS 780 miter saw, which retails for $600. If you buy the saw as a bare tool, it'll run you for $650, but it also includes the AC adapter. And the AC adapter on its own runs for $50, making this a $600 saw. You can also buy it as a kit that includes two batteries and the charger for $750. So it's still a $600 saw plus $150 for the two batteries, and you get the charger for free, whichever way you want to look at it. And also don't forget that I left you guys links down in the description below if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these bad boys. It does require two flexible batteries to operate to get to the 120 volts. I know what you guys are thinking and no it doesn't take DeWalt 20 volt batteries. As I already tried it and there's some tabs in the back that prevent the batteries from going in all the way. But anyways going back to the batteries, you need two flexible batteries to operate the saw. So you can't have one on the saw and one on the charger. Well. You could do that, but it wouldn't be of any use because you need two to operate the saw. But at least when the two batteries do run out of juice, you can charge them both at the same time with the included charger. There's also no need to worry about running out of juice in the middle of the day, as this saw can easily run all day long with the two included flexible batteries. I mean, I was able to get 151 cuts, not into 2x4s, not into 2x6s or 2x8s, but into 2x10s, and that's a lot of cuts. And if you ever do run out of power in the middle of the day, there's no need to worry as you can just plug the saw in if you have the AC adapter. So that's it for this episode of Tool Craze. As always, show your support for this channel by liking this video, checking out the Tool Craze website at www.toolcraze.net for more tool news, tool deals, and tool reviews you won't see here on this channel. And follow me over at social media, over at Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.